so much. And I'm sorry, Brandon, but I wanted those scriptures. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> All of them. Yeah, for <laughs> quite a few there. And it's some pretty heavy stuff. Some pretty heavy stuff in those scriptures. From the story of Job. Um, Revelation. I'll come back to that in a moment. But I wanted us to think, even in this season of joy, that there are many among us, many we know, many we love, who aren't having such a joyful season. Many of our friends, people we care about, haven't just had a fantastic meal with one of the people all around the table. It seems kind of of me to sermon title about what's left when everything is gone in the middle of the holidays. But you know, it wasn't that long ago that we knew all about that through fire, yes? And there's fire now. There are places not so far away where people have lost what they call the first time in my life I ever felt like that. I hadn't lost everything. Of course, I still had a home and a father and a sister, but I buried my mother on my 21st birthday. I'm sorry, I wasn't given standard issue here. <laughs> so I may need a different mic if this keeps falling off, okay? <laughs> I buried my mother on my 21st birthday. I thought I had lost everything. That wonderful, spiritual, hardworking, honest woman that I gave such a hard time to. <laughs> I know that surprises you. <laughs> Especially the people in the choir who can't get through one song without me mouthing off about something. <laughs> it's genetic, what can I say? My dad was like that. But I'm bringing before us the acknowledgement that even in a season of joy, for many it seems out of reach. So I want to think together with you about how to find the joy that overcomes. How to recognize suffering and loss and yet not be overcome by it. And what we can and should train ourselves to do for each other. So here's the overview. Three points. I'll rotate a couple of times through them. Try to make it easy for you in case you didn't sleep in this morning. This beautiful, wonderful, Life can be very, very hard at times. Yes? yes? Anybody here who doesn't know that from personal experience? I don't see any hands. <laughs> we all know about that, and it hurts. There's plenty of statistics. I'll give you just a couple now, maybe a few more later. One thing you might not know is that in the U.S., Average life expectancy has fallen for the third straight year. Fallen. Two main reasons. Drug overdose, primarily by the young. And suicide, primarily among middle-aged white males. Wow. That's an eye-opener if you haven't been paying attention to that. There are people who feel abandoned, who feel lost, who feel hopeless. And we have something to say to them, don't we? So that's why we're thinking about that together today. One time, years and years ago, when I was doing a training in Park City, Utah, for the Forest Service, it was a large meeting of many different national forests. I was talking about dealing with unwelcome change, which is a very pretty way of saying stuff that sticks. <laughs> you know, change of any kind is pretty unwelcome. We're creatures of habit. If I asked you right now to move one seat to the left, some of you would be very angry with me. <laughs> Just because it's a change. <laughs> no throwing things, please. <laughs> and I'm not asking you. I just want you to think how resistant you would be. So when a big, nasty change hits us, it hits hard. We don't like it one bit. And some people don't recover. As a nation, we're at peace, more or less. We're wealthy, more or less. 
and yet, and yet. We'll come back to a couple other indicators of that. But the second point, the Bible has something to say to us about what do we do when we're suffering, when we're unhappy. It's only two words, and it's the hardest two words. Trust God. What? Doesn't he know what's going on with me? Yeah, he knows. Trust God. We need to learn that. I think a lot of us try to tell God what we need him to do for us in those times instead of listening for what he wants us to do. Trusting, or as I can tell, is not a natural state. And there aren't very many online courses in how to do it. So we're going to have to turn to scripture. And the third point is that the church exists not only for glorifying God, but for building up one another. That's the secret. That's the secret sauce. That's how we get past the horrible things and learn to trust. So in our time together this morning, I want to acknowledge that life has many miserable challenges and many heartbreaking losses. I want to search scripture and experience for help in trusting God. And I want to provide a few suggestions and insights that might be of help to you in learning to love the people, particularly the people you don't find real lovable. Which is anybody not much like you, right? <laughs> Secret number two, nobody is like you. That's right. That's absolutely right. <laughs> Scripture is full of examples. Let's go to trust. Second slide. <laughs> Scripture is full of examples of people who trusted God. Oh, I promised you a few more statistics. Not that you want to hear them, but wildfires are an endemic and have struck more places with more force than we're aware of in history, although we don't know all of history. And it's not just here. Australia is suffering badly from wildfires. I'm not sure if you've been reading about that. Food insecurity. One in eight Americans doesn't know where their next meal is coming from. I'm not going to make you count off one day, one day, one day. But I want you to think how prevalent that is in our culture. <laughs> Suicide and overdose. We mentioned finances. Mostly for the young and the old is a serious issue. For the young, there's more and more contract hiring, independent contractor hiring, so they don't have health benefits, they don't have retirement programs, they don't have any trust left in Social Security, they don't. <laughs> for the young, it's extremely hard to feel safe financially. And for the old, they may wind up living out their days in a for-profit enterprise surrounded by strangers. Not what they had in mind. So financial insecurity. Loneliness, again. The nursing home. The person next to you who's got their nose in the phone not talking to you. Loneliness. Sometimes for Girls in school, it seems like the only people that talk to them are the mean girls, and they're saying nasty things. Everybody else is looking at their phone. Connection is a rare and beautiful gift we're losing unless we do something about it. And the church is ordered to do something about it over and over again in the scripture. Tension and uncertainty, not just political tension and uncertainty, which we see plenty of, but social rules are shifting. Are you supposed to open the door for me guys or not? Who knows? <laughs> social rules, that's an innocuous one, but social rules in general are shifting, aren't they? And it's hard to know how to behave around someone of different ethnicity, different gender, different age group, different experiential. That means everybody. Wow. So we have all this to deal with. I 
I haven't even gotten to the point of alcohol abuse and the point of mental health issues. And some of you heard me talk about a recent trip. Linda Brenner and I went together on an exploration of Singapore and Malaysia and Thailand. Got back last weekend. And the most disturbing thing to me in that beautiful part of the world was the justice system, and I'm not sure how just it is. They do caning and they do public hanging. As a result, there's very little crime, which is the good side of that. But I don't know what they do if the criminal is someone with a mental disorder, who just happens to have vandalized something because they were lashing out against unseen demons. Do they put them to death? Is there a protective legal system? I don't know. I found it disturbing. I love the clean streets. <laughs> I love the safety. But at what price? Because we are to be a cognizant of the need. It's likely you've experienced at least one of these issues, perhaps several. It's not news to you that your life can be very, very challenging. So what does our faith say about it? Number one, trust God. It's so short and so simple and so hard to do. Yes? My experience is that when you can't do it, God steps in and does it for you. Amazing, amazing grace. Scripture says to trust God. Psalm 28, 7, the Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him and he helps me. My heart leaps for joy and with my song I praise him. I've experienced that leap for joy, have you? What an amazing gift. It's not of our own power. Jeremiah, blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. They will be like a tree. You've heard this over and over. There's music about this. Like a tree planted by the water. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. Nahum. The Lord is good, a refuge in a time of trouble. He cares for those who trust in him. <coughs> Isaiah, surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. 